Just hit a button, Morty. Give me a beat. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Um. Who should Tottenham sign in this summer's transfer window? If you are looking for good quality, cheap football jerseys, then go over to www.jerseyfifa.com where you can get the new season's jerseys for under $30. They even have retro jerseys as well. A link to the website will be in the description below and you can use a coupon code AlantisFootball for 5% off. In this video, I will be talking about the transfers I would look to make if I was Tottenham this summer to play in Mourinho's side. So where do Tottenham need to improve? Well, I would say they need to look to upgrade upon Ben Davies in the left-back area with Danny Rose most likely to leave the club. They also need a new centre-back with Jan Vertonghen leaving the club as well, and a right-back to upgrade upon Serge Aurier, who is a decent offensive fullback, but I think he can be moved on and replaced with a better option there. Even though in ideal circumstances Tottenham would be looking for a Harry Kane alternative up front, I don't think Tottenham were have massive amounts to spend, and I think Mourinho would be better using Lucas Moura and Hyung min Son as makeshift centre-forwards when they are needed, rather than shelling out on a new forward. The big issue surrounding Tottenham is how much do they actually have to spend this summer with the coronavirus pandemic and a lack of attendance at games really hurting them with their massive stadium loan still hanging over their heads. But in all honesty, Tottenham cannot really be spending huge amounts, so we'll have to rely on selling players and won't be able to hand out big wages either. So all my transfer options will reflect this sort of transfer strategy. But in terms of selling players, who can they cash in on? Well, I'll look to sell Serge Aurier's, he could probably bring in around £20 million if AC Milan reportedly interested. And Ben Davies could bring in around £15 million. Carl Walker-Peters has already left for Southampton, bringing in £15 million, and Sissoko should also be moved on, whether this is on a loan or for a minimal fee, to get the 30-year-old off the wage bill. In that Tottenham could raise around £50 million in player sales and get some big wages off of the books. So who should Tottenham bring in this summer? Well before I get into that make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notified when my videos come out and after this video check out some of my others which will be linked in the description below. Tottenham have already bought in Pierre Emil Hoiberg from Southampton for around £15 million. He is a versatile midfielder who can play in a midfield double pivot in Mourinho's 4-2-3-1 or on the right as a workman-like right-sided midfielder. His pressing and technical ability should suit Tottenham well and basically provide a Moussa Sissoko upgrade. In terms of a right back, Tottenham need a player who has good offensive attributes in terms of his crossing, ball control and dribbling, whilst also having the necessary speed to recover his position when there is a turnover. This is because in Mourinho's 4-2-3-1 shape, one of the fullbacks, usually the right back, will push high up the pitch to provide the width on the right side, whilst the left back retains a deeper, narrow shape, creating a back three. This allows the right winger to move infield into the half space, whilst the left winger tends to hold his position a lot wider to provide the width on the left. The right back I would look to bring in is Max Ahrens from Norwich who would probably be attainable for around £20 million. Whilst at the moment I think Aurier is a better right back at just 20 years old, Max Ahrens is going to develop significantly over the next few seasons and I think in the long term Tottenham would be better moving on the 27 year old Aurier and bringing in the younger Ahrens. Ahrens has the necessary attributes to fulfil the offensive fullback role on the right side of Mourinho's system. He is a good dribbler able to shift the ball past defenders and use his pace to accelerate away from them progressing the ball up the pitch. This season in the Premier League, he's completed 1.3 dribbles per 90 minutes, the same amount as Serge Aurier and Luke Shaw. In terms of his chance creating, he does need to improve that part of his game. This season in the Premier League, he's completed 0.6 key passes per 90 minutes, the same amount as Aaron wan which when you factor in that Max Ahrens is playing for the league's worst side, does seem a lot more impressive than just the numbers alone. He'd work excellently on the right flank, making runs in behind the opposition's back line and getting into these sorts of positions where he can look to put in low crosses across the box, which he's fairly decent at putting in when he gets into the right position. Here we can compare Max Aaron's statistical model to Serge Aurier's. Both players have the same expected assist rate and a similar amount of successful dribbles. Aurier does have a better tackle success rate and better interception numbers, however I think this is a part of Aaron's game that will improve the most when he's able to work with Mourinho. Considering that Tottenham can essentially use the Aurier money to get Aaron's, this seems like a great deal for Spurs to make. So the centre-back that I would look to bring in would be Aaron's' Norwich teammate Ben Godfrey. I think Godfrey has been one of the most underrated players in the Premier League this season. He'd probably be attainable for between £25 and £30 million, but due to his age being just 22 and him also being a homegrown player, I think this is a deal that Tottenham have to make. Godfrey is an aerially dominant, quick defender with excellent positioning and reading of the game, whilst also being a great ball-playing centre-back as well, pretty much the profile of a potential top-class centre-back. It's his reading of the game which impresses me the most, as this is often lacked by young centre-backs. See here against Bournemouth how the Norwich backline has become stretched, but Godfrey has a positional awareness to cut off the passing lane into the forward in the box. 
rather than moving to cover this space and allow the Bournemouth player space at the back post, Godfrey makes the right decision to stay in this area with his body in a side on position, ready to adjust wherever the cross comes in. When we compare Godfrey statistically to Toby Alderweireld, we can see how good the Norwich man looks. He ranks in the 67th percentile, the top 33% of centre-backs in Europe's top 5 leagues for his tackling rate which stands at 50% compared to Alderweireld's 36%, showing that Godfrey is an excellent one-on-one -on -one defender. He also ranks highly for aerial duels one but isn't a big interceptor, suggesting that he's less of a front foot defender and better as a covering centre-back, sitting behind and looking to use his pace to cut off players running in behind the back line. His on the ball ability is also particularly impressive. He dwarves even Alderweireld, who is a very good ball playing centre back. Godfrey ranks in the 68th percentile for pass completion and 61st for long passes, with a long pass completion rate of 80%. It's this ball playing ability that will be key for Mourinho's Tottenham. Godfrey's ability to either switch the attack quickly from the back line to an advanced position on the flanks or play an incisive pass into a forward player between the lines of the opposition system will improve Tottenham's ability to break down compact defensive units and his composure, ball control and passing will aid Tottenham when they look to build up from the back against a high press. Godfrey alongside Alderweireld would be an excellent partnership with Godfrey adding the pace and aerial ability to the heart of Tottenham's back line. In the left back spot I would look to bring in the 23 year old Spaniard Arad Martin from Mainz who would cost around £15 million. Martin is a very good offensive fullback but doesn't bring the defensive insecurity that other young offensive fullbacks have in their game. He's a competent defender, he doesn't oversell himself looking to make interceptions when a pass is played out to the wide attacker, instead he prefers to retain his position and stop gaps in the back line from opening up, which is perfect for the left back in Mourinho's system. He makes a decent 1.6 interceptions per 90, 1.4 tackles per 90 and his only dribble pass 0.5 times per 90, showcasing his defensive ability. But it is going forward where Martin excels, he's completed the 5th most key passes of any fullback in the Bundesliga this season with 1.8 per 90. He's also made 1.1 dribbles per 90 and this dribbling ability will allow Tottenham to progress the ball from the defensive third to the middle third using his ball carrying ability, which should make Tottenham a lot better at playing out of a high press than with Ben Davies in that position. His crossing ability will also be a valuable asset for Tottenham, particularly with him playing in a deeper role to Aaron's on the other side, meaning that he will be getting more opportunities to cross from deep positions. When we look at Martin's statistical model, we can see his ability clearly. He ranks in the 95th percentile or the top 5% in terms of fullbacks in Europe's top 5 leagues for expected assists with 0.17 per 90 minutes. He also ranks in the 70th percentile for dribbling with 1.21 per 90, but we can also see that he's not a massive tackler or interceptor from the stats, but he's a good positional defender which is a crucial asset, particularly playing in a narrow Mourinho back line. So overall, £15 million pounds is an absolute steal for a 23-year-old fullback with Martin's attacking ability, who also provides versatility, being able to play as a wingback in a back five as well. So overall, this is what Mourinho's side will look like with these transfers, a back four of Aaron's, Alderweireld, Godfrey and Martin, with Sessegnon and Tanganga being used as backup fullbacks when needed, as well as Foyf, Sanchez and also Tanganga also being used as centre-backs when needed, with Lloris in goal and Gazaniga as a backup as well. In the midfield double pivot, Mourinho would be able to play on Dumbele alongside Winks with Lacelso in front of them, but Dyer and Hoiberg could also come in and Lacelso could also drop into that deeper role in some games. The starting three behind Kane would be Son on the right as this allows him to drift in field into central positions, with Bergwijn holding his width a lot more on the left and Lacelso playing in the central attacker midfield spot. Hoiberg could also be used as a wide midfielder on the right in certain games, and Lucas Moura, Deli Ali and Lamella could also come into field these spots, with Lucas Moura and Son also capable of playing as a false number 9 centre forward if needed. So thank you for watching, if you enjoyed that video give it a like, check out some of my other videos linked in the description below and remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications and for cheap jerseys check the link in the description below so you can go to www.jerseyfever.com and use the coupon code AlantisFootball for 5% off.